Welcome to Thirsty Thursdays once again. I am R2K. I'm Robert Keys. I am his younger brother. It's another beauty day on the prairie, I must have to say, and thank you for joining us for a ice cold brew. This is our first week of beginning this Thirsty Thursdays, and so what we thought is the way to start out, let's just pour a cup. And as we do this, you do the owners. Sure. Do the owners. But as we do so, well, feel free to join in, because I mean, we're not live. Clearly, we uploaded this video, so kick back, relax. You can pause this video, go get a drink, and come back. We'll be right here. And then once you come back, pour a drink with us. Let's kick back, relax. That's the Thirsty Thursdays. Watch him pour. Watch him pour. He's going to make it. How many times How many times you pour? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> so, yes, we are representing Battle Axe, the movement. Shout out to Rocco. Much love to the boss man. Uh, you know, like we said prior to all of this, that we're going to bring in some guests, but for the next little while here, you just get to know me, so, uh, what do you, what do you want to know there, brother? It's going to sound mature, man. Yep. Uh, let's see, the intro to the whole thing could be the intro of R2K. What up? <laughs> what do you want to know? I said the intro to R2K. Oh, it's, so let's start it's with good, that. it's good brute. No, uh. R2K, okay, what when, when does that stem back to, uh, your, probably... Your initials? Yeah, it, okay, yeah, there you go. So, obviously R is for Richard, and K was for Keys when I was younger. And I, my hockey number, playing hockey, in both Cut Knife and Wilkie, with the merge team to Unity, was two. So I just, I hold that number dear, so I always... Being the young punk that I was, was like, well, it's R2K, like Richard to the Keys, you know. And then uh, as, uh, well, that's good. That's good TV or radio or whatever we're doing here. That's good podcasting. That's there you go, yeah. <laughs> Phones on. No, um, uh, <laughs> you just won a thousand dollars. Yeah, bro. Shopkins dollars. That's what happens when you have kids. No, uh, so anyways, R2K it stems from Richard to the Keys hockey number, but as we come full circle here with my re-emergence into doing my music and with my brother. I think it's better recognized and I want to stand behind this statement more so than anything. It's, it's Robert and Richard, two R's to the keys because we both have last name keys. So I, I'm going to stick with that meaning now on. But you, now you know the origin and what it means today. So. There's a part one and a part two. So where, how about where we grew up? Where did we grow up? You know, big shout out to the Oilers and uh, and all you Saskatchewan people who I love dearly. Let's go Eskimos, this is the year. I'm sorry. <laughs> Your team ain't looking too fine. But anyway, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm the I'm Oilers a, from yeah. 2007 to 2016. We don't talk about that. Yeah, those are, we well, don't that's, <laughs> that's a lost case. No, that's a lost case. Yeah. Yeah. This will be like, our lost case will be like week one to week 30. We won't ever talk about these ever again. So, what, what was I getting at? Uh, yeah, born in Edmonton. We were all, myself, my sister, my brother, born in Edmonton. It wasn't until I was about nine years old, I have to say. Yeah. Uh, moved out to Cut Knife because dad needed a new job and this spur of the moment started all over. We uprooted the family, started all over with the new home, everything got regrassed and there was a big change for myself because I went from like city in Clareview, Edmonton, shout out to the Brothers Grimm up in Beverly, not far away, that's where my family grew up, my dad's family, but uh, anyway, you know, started out there, came out here and like I did a good solid 10 years of growing up here, cutting my teeth and the knife and uh, you know, that's when I got into the hip hop thing and the skateboard thing and everything else that goes with it and moved up to Saskatoon and did my 10 years there, becoming the carpenter and the site superintendent that I am for a general contractor today. You know, you always go back home to your roots and this truly is home. Although I'll always be an Edmonton fan when it comes to sports, cut knife is home, Saskatchewan's home. I love the people, love the atmosphere. I love how we've frozen that part of time where people still care in this world because it's far and few between. Yeah, when I mean, you talk about leaving and coming back, I mean, I did it, and a lot of the backsport guys that we're all, 
Yeah, there's, there's a big there's a big yeah. chunk of us actually back in this town mm-hmm. that are Battle leader. Axe Warriors. Yeah, the division leader from you know guys like Colton even Stapley down the road. Like uh, Jody lives down the road too. We all live just literally down the road. And uh, <laughs> my phone keeps going off. Anyway, um, yeah. So. The biggest thing that we're trying to do for the Back to War movement is we're giving back to our community. Colton's been doing lots with the with the museum, and we all got kids coming up, a lot of five to one year olds. We want to make this town survive, and that's that's the goal, and to thrive at North Battleford Unity too. And you know, a lot of good family there, friends, Back to War family. Let's so, go back to how when you first moved to Cut Night. And meeting all the guys that are now in Max were like yeah, Josh, Joey, no Colton. Oh, Josh. You want to talk about how I met Josh? He'll be a guest that is in the very week. soon future, I, <laughs> I believe. That guy's needed a haircut since he was nine years old, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but no, I grew, I, Josh's dad grew up, or Josh's dad worked across the road from where my dad worked. And I just moved to this town and being the 10, nine year old, I'm on my bike. Every day with the Gretzky card stuffed in the spokes, not knowing what it's worth today. Just kicking kicking around town, and I uh, just happened to cross paths with him. We're both hitting up our dads for change for the arcade. Then you go hit that Mortal Kombat, you know what I'm saying? And, and back when Cut Knife had an arcade <laughs> and a Main we'll, Street. We'll bring it back. We'll bring yeah, it back. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so met Josh that way, and we spent years playing hockey together. We spent years skateboarding together. There was always this unspoken competition between the two of us that drove us to be just the great guys that we are today. And much love to Josh Waldner. Uh, Colton was always one year below us and all through high school. You know, we, we gave him a name. Not that he was dumb, but he was just younger. No, he was, he was smart. He was smart. Smart. Very smart. But, very smart. you know, razzing in high school. And we always gave him his name, Sheldon. I don't think he ever enjoyed it too much. Colton, Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that he, he outgrew that. And then he was a guy that just always had a handle on everything. And I much respected him. And then when I lived in Saskatoon, he actually rented my basement and lived with me for a good, like, Five years, I would have to say, at least in, well, probably four to five years when my sister wasn't living in the basement suite no more and uh, went through a lot of good stories with Colton and now it just so happens he lives literally four houses down the alley and we got kids growing up the same age with the same initials and it's the next back four generation, man. It's pretty sweet. And Jody Dow, Jody. Jody Dow met Jody. He was a couple of years older than me, but he jumped on the skateboard along with Linton Wakely. He's also a member. And, you know, there was epic moments in Josh Walner's driveway, and that's how I became a carpenter, and I learned what I did, because we just, me and Josh would just scavenge up lumber all over town. And build a We ramp. built quite, I'd have to say, we built quite the skate park in that driveway, and pushed out a dirty couch, and just had that California surfer vibe all the time in the driveway and just let loose and people would just cruise through town and the rednecks booze cruising much love to the rednecks because they just pick us up take us for a rip tear we'll go for a rip and i was like yeah I'll go for a rip and just go tearing down the back road drink a sixer drop us back off and then we try to skateboard was always a nightmare but you know a lot of a lot of good times in that driveway from josh hitting his head pretty seriously to colin emerly's Seriously hurting himself like daily, so you know. But that's uh, that's life, and that's what it's become. Even Jordan Walner, uh, you want to get into that one? That that kid, I want that kid. Member. Yeah, he's a back to member. That's Josh's little brother. I remember that kid showing up in the world, and we're all like fourteen. We got an attitude, listening to Limp Biscuit. And here he comes, Jordan, and we put him on a little banana board from Walmart right away. Got him riding ramps and this and that, and the kids just. The epitome of wasted talent, that guy, man. Step the game up, man. He's a kid that had so much skill at such a young age, but he, just like all of us, myself included, you know, take some time to learn those lessons in life and come to where you're at. So, yeah. yeah. What about, you mentioned Colin Emberly. We'll do a little quick thing about the DFA. And that starts oh, yeah. So, when I was like 15, 
16, we had this thing called the shack in town. This is why I call this the battle shack, because the shack in town was quite quite the place. We, we decked it out. It was this old shack in Ira Sachs' place. Right off Main Street, we had the most biggest epic parties. We had uh, a bunk bed in the back room of this shack, because it was a three-parted room shack. A bunk bed with blinds in the top, where we may smoke some medicinal or whatnot, and uh, sit behind the blinds and peek through during the party up on a couch. You put the couch on the top bed, on the top level of the, of the bunk beds, you put a couch with the blinds, and then we hang a blanket below, and people would fool around down below, and we'd sit up top burning on them, and we'd peek through the blinds and watch the party go on. Then another room, we had like a VIP section, which was a lot of lounge chairs and a lot of black lights and stuff where you could just like chill with your girls. And then the front room had a bar, and it also had a microphone that used to hang from the ceiling, and we started this DFA thing, and me and Colin Emberley. And Colin Emberley is quite the gifted producer, I must say, and even at such a young age, he self-taught himself, and we did record the most grime, grimiest 16-year-old guys recording an album ever. And it did pretty well in our little community back in that day, you know, 2002, 2003. Burning them off and handing them out, and it was quite, quite the... I wouldn't change it. I, I put it in today, and it's like flipping through a photo album. You know what That's I'm what saying? That's it is, yeah. It's... it's it's better than a photo album because it brings you back to that place, that moment where you were 16 writing these really terrible rhymes, but you just stand behind them so greatly. It's, it's, I would never change it for the world. It's pretty good. So much love to Colin Everly, man. Anytime you want to come to the Battle Shack, you're more than welcome. And that's also to Ira Sachs, to Tony Falcon. Rest in peace, Billy. Billy Francis, man. Rest in peace, man. That was a terrible accident. Work accident. Construction world is just, it's a dangerous thing. So, but, uh, you know, a lot of those MB guys too, still kicking yeah. around. I bump into them all the time working there. And all the Battle Axe guys that are part of the global movement, they're going to be a lot of guests coming in here for the next foreseeable future. As we said last week on our teaser video, there's going to be, what, Josh Waldner and the whole division leader and everybody in between that to us. So, between that, we will try and upload every Thursday at 8 p.m. Still, we're not going to mess around with that. And make sure to just subscribe. And you're going to get more videos, so check out the whole social yeah, media. Ch ch check out all my links, man. Please, if you if you really like what we're doing out here on the prairie, and you want to support Cut Knife North Balliford Unity uh, and the hip-hop scene that we're trying to make a positive thing, there's no... Well, big thing with Backscore, if you didn't know this already, there's no drugs, there's no uh, uh, criminal activity. If you're caught with it, we ban you for life. And, and Rocco even says, we'll burn you shit, you know. <laughs> yeah. And that's coming from the boss, man. He says, you, know, you don't just save it and rehand it up somewhere. It gets burned, so it does. it's for real. But uh, we do take minutes. It's very organized. It's almost, uh, I would compare it to a union or... Like back in the day with the good fellows, stuff like that. So we are a gentleman's club and uh, there is a woman's division. It's kind of in uh, a rebuilding section, not taking new members, but just come to our meetings. We hold them in North Battleford at the pool hall down yeah, the stairs on the first there. And much respect and love to the owners of that place. Thank you for, you've been more than accommodating. We've thrown a few shows there even. So, other than that, this is our first official Thirsty Thursdays. I've hoped you guys enjoyed it, and I'm uh, so just a final my little. Drink here. Okay, you chug it. I'll say check Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, and how oh, one other? Yeah, we're on YouTube. Oh, Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. That's the uh, big one that we do have. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see where this goes. If it gets better, you know, maybe we. Over time, boost it to some live shows, and then yeah, just we take some uh, tweets from you guys. I'll start up a tw uh, Twitter page here. We'll take some live tweets and questions when we do have a good guest, or you yeah, can ask even. myself throughout the week before we do the next one. And uh, you know, we'll make this a big thing if you guys can help us make it. 
And then once we get this thing going, the EP for R2K comes Oh, out. right. Yeah, no, I'm working on that. Yeah, that'll be a that'll little be boyhood so dream come true. And check yeah. out uh, next week, we'll discuss it. Yeah, 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 next week we'll, we'll talk more about talk that. All about the R2K, the new mix, yeah. the new EP that's coming yeah, out. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in on the tracks that are coming and what it is that I try to write my music about. Yep, and all the origins of that. All so right. with that, we will say goodbye. I should finish my drink. And then, cheers. Battle Axe, peace.